<clears throat> Hello, fellow library lover, and welcome to another webinar in which we'll discuss an online database in detail. Today we'll be discussing Gale in Context, U.S. History. Hi, my name is Stuart Schaefer, and I'm the head of reference at the Farmingdale Public Library. If you need to contact me, my contact information is my phone number, 516-249-9090, extension 203, at least when the library is open. My email address is fdaleref at nasalibrary.org. And you'll be needing to go to the library's website for this tutorial, this webinar. The library's address is farmingdalelibrary.org. So, what is Gale in Context U.S. History? It's an online database, and as my outline that you see on the screen discusses, basically uh, U.S. History Gale in Context that covers most U.S. history topics running from the arrival of the Vikings in North America to the American Revolution, it discusses World War I and II, the Civil Rights Movement, 9-11, the War on Terror, and much, much more. Um, the audience of this online resource is uh, junior high school, high school, and to some extent some college students. When you get to the library website, and when you need, when you get the library website, and you, when you want to access the database, you'll need your library card, because on the back is a barcode, and you'll need to be putting that 14-digit number in to, uh, to access the uh, Gale in Context U.S. History. And I'm going to scroll down a little more. I'm going to do a search for the Washington Monument, and then I'm going to do a search for all the Battle of Gettysburg, just to get you familiar with the resource. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to take a moment to share my screen, and you will um, see the library's website momentarily. And there you go. Okay, good. So. This is the library's website at farmingdalelibrary.org. And to get to uh, Gale in Context U.S. History, we're gonna go to the Research tab at the top in the green bar. We're gonna scroll down to Electronic Resources by Subject, and we're gonna scroll down to History. <clears throat> the first resource is Gale in Con Context U.S. History. There's also a Gale in Context World History. I'll probably talk about that in another webinar. But uh, the summary for Gale in Context U.S. History is coverage of the most studied U.S. history topics, including the arrival of the Vikings in North America, American Revolution, Civil Rights, 9-11, and the War on Terror. I'm going to click on the text. And I actually did a pre practice run for this database earlier today. And because of cookies, um, I won't need to put my barcode in. But if you did, it would be a search box just like this one. And you'd put in the 21736 and uh, the rest of the nine digits of the barcode. The total number of digits for the barcode is 14. So uh, if you have fewer or more than 14 digits, you, you've made a mistake. And you won't be able to access uh, Gale in Context U.S. history. So um, this is the search bar. And um, I'm gonna do the basic search that I mentioned for Washington. And it's gonna be monument, but I just wanna mention that autofill automatically kicks in. So anything with the phrase Washington gets picked up. So we have George Washington Carver, George Washington the President, Booker T. Washington, Washington, the Washington Post, Washington State, and so on. But I want to actually do a search for the Washington Monument, and I'm going to type it in, Washington Monument. And it's the first one after I type the whole phrase in. I'm going to come back to the other um, icons that were on the previous page um, in, mo in a moment. Um, so we did a search for Washington Monument, and these are the results. All um, it looks like all, how many would it be? Roughly um, 26 in reference, four in videos, and I'm highlighting four academic journals, six biographies, 38 audio, one website, one primary source, 
109 magazine articles, 16 images, and 712 um, news articles. And that's actually what I wanted to click on. Um, I'm going to go through the whole, pretty much the page by the end of the presentation. I'm clicking on news. And we're going to go from there. Um, actually, I wanted to, yeah, we'll do this. So these are the 712 news articles. And what it's showing is the articles sorted by relevance. I wanted to show you the newest articles first, just to show you that this is a really current um, database. So this article is from May 26, 2020, Height is No Small Matter. It came from the New York Times. And uh, the second one is from 2020, the Washington Nationals World Series rings features 170 diamonds. And there's a baby shark tribute. Okay, interesting. And if you scroll down, you see the basic format where you have a title of the article. I just highlighted this one. The author, Peter Herman, Peter Herman, the Washington Post is where it's from. And then the date, April 23rd, this particular article about a man gets prison for setting fire. It's 677 words. It's an article. That 1380L, that refers to the Lexile score. Lexile scores are measurements of how complicated a particular magazine article is or a journal article is. They run up to about 15 or 1600. Those are very sophisticated, um, advanced articles for probably college students and above. Um, anywhere over about 1,000 to 1,400, 1,300 is for a high school student. And then there are different gradations. Um, there's also something called a content level. Um, just to the right of the 1300, 1380L. And the higher the content level, in this case it's the level five, the more sophisticated, complicated, and in detail the article is. I'm going to click on the top article about height is no small matter, just to show you more about it. So this is the text of the article I'm showing you, I'm highlighting it. And I highlighted the whole thing. We're at the bottom of the article. It looks like there are some captions over here. And then there are citations about photos down here. And towards the bottom, you have a source citation. So if you're writing it for a term paper or a bibliography, or if you need it for a bibliography or footnotes, you can create a source citation for the MLA 8th edition format, or the APA 6th edition format, or the Chicago Manual of Style 17th edition. Just click on whichever one you want and the format will change. Click on select and then you can copy and paste it, drop it into your term paper in Microsoft Word or any other word processing software that you're using. I'm scrolling back to the top of the page and if you notice on the left, you can translate the article into many other different languages. For instance, you have Arabic and Chinese and Czech and Danish and French and German and Greek and Hebrew and Hindi and Italian and Japanese, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, um, Ukraine, Ukrainian, Vietnamese, Russian, Romanian, you get the idea. And um, let's just try see what it looks like if I translated it into um, Bulgarian. That's Bulgarian and I don't want to complete the translation. I don't want to get lost, so I'm going to cancel it. There you go. You can also make the font bigger or smaller. Click on that icon, the big A, it makes it larger. Um, just know that the larger the letters on the page, the more that you'll have to scroll down because there's less on the page. And the opposite is true. The smaller the text, the less you'll have to scroll down because there's more on the page, but you'll have to squint more. You can actually have someone read the article, click on listen, and it's starting. So I just turned my volume on on my computer. And you can see the blue line and the green line are the words that are being spoken. Anyway, interesting. So if you wanted to uh, download the article or save it to Google Drive, click on this icon over here. I have my cursor highlighting it. 
Just to the right of that is the Microsoft Cloud icon. That would save it to your Microsoft Cloud account. And then you can email it, this one right here. And I'm not sure what this is. I think that lets you download it. Yeah, you can download it to your computer. To the right, you have the word explore. So if you wanted to find more articles like this one, Hide is No Small Matter, that's the title. Um, there's one called Carson Edwards, Out to Prove Height Doesn't Matter. It's from June 6, 2019 from the Philadelphia Inquirer. And so um, this is the article right here. I highlighted it and I made the font smaller actually. Uh, it looks like this is about a basketball player from uh, 2019. And again, I'm scrolling down, you have the source citation. And again, you have at the top right, a document type, the length of the article over here, the content level, and the lexile measure. You could also download it to your Google Drive over here, or up here to your Microsoft Cloud. You could email it or download it. Any of these icons where I'm hovering over um, the pictures over here. So I'm going to go back to this original screen. And we're going to do a search for not the Washington Monument, but the Battle of Gettysburg. And notice it kind of knew that I was going to do that search. Uh, maybe it was from what I did earlier today. But um, autofill kicks in, and I'm going to do a search for Battle of Gettysburg. So this is a nice long overview of the battle. Um, we can click on read more. And if you notice at the right side of the screen, the vertical scroll bar, the smaller that is, the larger the article. So right now I'm using the scroll bar to scroll to the bottom of the page. And it's not such a big scroll bar. It's not such a huge article. That's because this article is roughly 865 words. I'm looking at the top on the right over here. And it looks like there's a section towards the top of the page, words to know in this article, including infantry, artillery, and consecration. You see the translate, font size, and listen icons. And um, you can actually get some further reading, almost like a bibliography down here. Um, there's one titled Gettysburg American Battlefield Trust, and it came from battlefields.org. And then there's an article from Ann Knowles, and then another one, and so on. I'm going to go back because this is the really neat part of the database. Uh, we're going to do a search for, uh, again, the Washington, uh, the Battle of Gettysburg. And I did want to do something else. So let's give me one second, Washington. I'm going to do my Washington Monument search because I think that was better. I wanted to show you the results for different formats, content types. Um, for the Washington Monument, there were, there's one primary source article and the document. There's 38 audios, four academic journals, five reference source, 26 reference sources, 16 images, 109 magazines, one website, six biographies, four videos, and 712 news articles. I first wanted to show you the reference sites, 26. I'm going to sort by re relevance. Nope, we're going to change it to newest article. And the newest one came from, unfortunately, 2013. And it's from the St. James Encyclopedia of Popular Culture Online. I'm going to click on the Washington Monument article, and it talks about the Washington Monument being a tall, slender obelisk. There are some citations that if you wanted to go further, you could read about it more. And it looks like we need to sort by newest. OK. Let's look under uh, Lincoln Memorial. And here's a picture of the Lincoln Memorial. 
of people looking at it. And we're going to go back again. So we looked at references and let's look at some magazine articles, the 109 of them. Let's sort it by newest article first. Okay, uh, it's from Wild West, August 2019. And I'm going to click on Warriors Home and you get the idea. Another citation up here. Another article down here, a very brief one. I'm going back to that page. I'm just trying to show you these different um, content types. I wanted to show you the news articles, the 712 of them. We're not going to go through all of them. But again, I'm going to change it to, um, to the newest articles first. And again, we have that original article, Height is No Small Matter, and the Washington National article. And um, we'll look at another one called Guilty Plea and Plot Attack of the White House with a Missile from April 4th of this year. So this came from the New York Times. It's a 530-word article. It's a 1470 Lexile measure article. And this is the article as I'm scrolling down. So um, I showed you how to cite the article up here. You can do it up here or at the bottom of the page. You can send the article to Google Drive or OneDrive or your email using this link over here. You could download it to your computer. You could print it to your local printer. Just click on the print icon and then click print. This will go to my XP7100. And um, what else? We are going to go back and do another search. I just wanted to do a really broad search for World War II. And I'm um, just going to do a very basic search and just show you how we found many more articles and, and content, much more content um, for World War II than for the, the Washington Monument. Um, looks like there are 5,600 articles from magazines and 31,000 news articles, 1,784 biographies. Let's click on that. Hopefully I'll find a biography of a very pop, well-known person from World War II. And let's look at the, uh, this Grace Hopper article. She was a, I believe, a very famous um, mathematician in World War II. She was a computer scientist. So this is her name. It came from the Encyclopedia of World Biography Online. It's a 1240 Lexile measure. And this is basically um, almost a chronology of her life over here, since it's um, Amer US history. And she was in influential in World War II. Uh, this is a chronology over here, and this is the text of the article about her. It's a very brief biography. She was a uh, computer scientist. And um, this gives you a brief biography of her. Some of the works that she's written or wrote, awards down here. And um, it's really, really helpful if you have a term paper. Uh, <clears throat> one other thing I did want to mention before I uh, start closing ending the presentation is under the search bar, not only is there an advanced search, which means that you can search for terms or phrases as in a keyword or a publication title or the author of the article or the subject or a company name or a place name or the publisher name. Um, you can do it and searching. So it'd be a little like searching a Venn diagram where you can search World War II and military. I'll show you that. World War II. And then we'll do a search for women in the, um, in the document title. And I'm going to show you a few other things. So we did a search for full text articles in Gale and Context in US history. 
and we search for World War II and women. So we're only find, looking for articles about those two topics. And um, well, there was one from American, Americans at War, um, volume three, 1901 to 1945. And this is an article about a thousand words. And it gives you a Lexile number. And that's kind of an advanced search. The other thing I wanted to mention is you don't have to just search US history. You could search world history or both US history and world history. If you combine the two searches, it's a much broader search than if you just search US history or world history. And finally, I want to start completely fresh because there's one last thing that I wanted to show you. If you do a search for women, actually, you know what? I'm going to do my world, my Washington Monument search. That's an excellent search. And I'm going to do a search for news articles. And Oh, uh, let's do Battle of Gettysburg. Battle of Good. We can browse the topics. So this is actually at the top of the search where we did uh, the, the search for the Battle of Gettysburg. We can browse the topics. And we can search under topics. We could search view all of them. And then we have all of these topics, biographies, economics, Native Americans, wars and conflicts. Or we can search by year. And this is, this is just a, an alphabetical search of all the topics. So let's say we're looking for um, uh, con the Constitutional Convention. We click on that and we get a nice long entry about it. And then at the bottom of the page, we have the featured content, primary sources, and related topics down here, images, magazines, biographies. I'm gonna click on related topics. And then you have pictures of the articles Confederation or Federalists or John Hancock. Let's click on James Madison and you get a brief biography of him. Um, I'm going to click on some news articles about him. And we're going to sort by newest, just to show you again, probably for the third time. And this is from June 1st, 2020 from the Washington Post. And it's about an Episcopal bishop talking about Donald Trump. And um, We'll go from there. So um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Uh, just to, re to note, um, I, I save these and I post them to YouTube. Uh, the library has a YouTube channel. Just do a search for Farmingdale Public Library. And also at some point, we'll put them up on the library website as an archive. I've done a whole bunch of these before, so you'll be able to see a lot of the other Gale databases and other research databases that uh, I've covered. Um, finally, the library has an Instagram account and um, you can search for Farmingdale Library. You'll see some content relating to these, um, these presentations and there's other library that content that's being generated and put on Instagram. Just do a, uh, a Farmingdale Public Library search on Instagram and you should see all of that stuff. So um, if you have any questions, please shoot me an email at fdalref at nasolibrary.org. And if you have any questions, please um, wait till the library is open. But um, my phone number would be 249-9090, extension 203. Hope you enjoyed these presentations or this presentation. I'll be doing more in the future. I usually tape on Tuesday nights and Friday nights, sometimes Saturday nights. And they end up on YouTube, as I said. And um, hope you enjoyed this. Have a great night. Take care.